the McCain campaign. Here's what Tommy Thompson, the former governor of Wisconsin, had to say when he was asked about how the campaign is going, doing. He, he was asked whether he believes it's going well. And as you can see, he said, no, and I don't know anyone who thinks that it is. Would that be your judgment as well? Well, I think so. Even within the campaign, I don't, I'm not sure that they, they really believe that it's going well. I think there's, uh, you know, they didn't want to run a campaign about the economy as the main issue. They wanted to run a character campaign, an experience campaign. John McCain, seasoned, somebody who's seen hard times versus the rookie, the neophyte, somebody who really hasn't been around. Uh, that's been blown out of the water by events on Wall Street, events in the financial system. And now John McCain is being forced to play in turf where he is not as comfortable he is on, as he is on foreign policy and duty on our country. It's been very tough for him. You've seen the campaign kind of move from idea to idea, and, and especially without a consistent narrative that the American people right now want to hear. How did we get here? What happened? Uh, what are your ideas for getting out? You can't just blame this or that. Obama blames deregulation. Well, that's simplistic. Uh, McCain says it's Fannie and Freddie. Well, that's part of it, but not everything. You need a larger narrative. You think the uh, attacks on Obama's character and his association with William Ayers in the past are working? I think it's a legitimate issue. Associations are always a legitimate issue. It speaks to judgment and character. But I think in this context, coming as late as it has, I think it's going to look to some people like a distraction more than the central issue of the campaign. I think McCain has to address the economy. All right, uh, John Harwood, let's just share with our viewers, if we can, the latest uh, Newsweek poll. Uh, in the overall poll, Obama is now up by 11 points, 52 to 41. But here are the interesting internals. Who's best equipped to deal with health care? Obama up by 26 percent, economy and jobs, 19 percent, energy and gas prices, 17 percent, Wall Street housing crisis, 16 percent, taxes and spending, 11 percent, social issues, that includes guns and abortion, 7 percent, the Iraq war, he's even ahead of John McCain on the Iraq war by a percentage point, the only place where uh, John McCain is leading Barack Obama is who's best equipped to deal with terrorism and national security, with 23 days to go before the campaign, that's a devastating poll for the, uh, for the McCain campaign. Well, it is, and it shows again how the strategy of the McCain campaign is at war with events in the world which are lifting Barack Obama. Uh, John McCain has, as Paul mentioned, wanted to run a character campaign. Even now, McCain strategists think their best opportunity of closing this lead, and by the way, the only candidate who has ever closed a mid-October lead approaching this size was Ronald Reagan in 1980 when he was running against Jimmy Carter. And that was a campaign in which the presidential debate occurred very late. Once he was seen as acceptable by the American people, he then moved ahead of Carter. Um, but the, they're looking at this lead, 11 points in Newsweek, 9 points in the Gallup track, and saying, how can we knock some people off? Barack Obama doesn't need any more votes. He just needs to hold the people he's got. John McCain's got to dominate the undecided, and he's got to turn some people. The McCain, I was talking to a McCain advisor the other day who said, one in five white voters is still persuadable. Uh, they're people that we can raise doubts about Barack Obama, and that's why they, they uh, do this air stuff. They've got to talk about the economy because, as Paul said, it's the issue everybody's thinking about, but it's still not the core of the strategy in the end. Mm -hmm. And, Ted Koppel, I want to ask you about something that uh, Fortune magazine has written. They say, a month of historic government intervention shows signs of triggering a political version of climate change, unleashing a new era of class fury that could hurt U.S. companies, business leaders, and wealthy investors for years, a potential calamity, predicts Democratic pollster Doug Schoen. Do you see in what we're going through the seeds of some kind of class warfare in this country, Main Street versus Wall Street with a real sense of vengeance? In a sense, what I see is a, a, an historic change in the way we do business in the country. One of the things that really has not been mentioned yet is that ours has been a credit card economy for so many years now that much of what has happened uh, over these past years and much of what I think is responsible for the crisis we're in right now is that people at every level, not just in buying their houses, but in buying their cars, in buying their clothes, in buying, indeed, everything that they purchase, have been encouraged to buy more than they can afford, have been offered credit cards, and then when they can't pay the bills, they end up with 20% interest payments, 22% interest payments. That has got to change. 
Do you think the candidates are talking enough about no, that? I don't think they're talking about it at all. I don't think they've even dared to address it. I mean, uh, you know, which political candidate in his right mind is going to tell the American public, I'm sorry, I'm going to take your visa card away from you? Jimmy Carter it, tried that, and it didn't work out too well. But you know what? I think at this moment that might be the way to go, particularly for John McCain. I mean, Barack Obama says, I don't need to do this. I've got a lead. I'm going to run out the clock. I don't need to take any risk. John McCain needs to take at least to try something. And if he said, look, uh, uh, Barack Obama blames deregulation. Uh, I've, I've been talking about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and other things. There's plenty of, of, of blame to go around. But we had a classic credit mania in this country, fed by easy money by the Federal Reserve, turbocharged by government policies. We're all going to pay a price for it. I think if he acknowledged that, it might show a maturity and a leadership that the American people might respond that would to. Be serious straight talk. But, but risky because, again, you know, I, I've talked to both of the candidates about this. Is it a problem with us as opposed to, and, and they all tend to go to the greed and corruption on Wall Street or Washington's broken. It's very, very difficult to look at the voters and say, you're part of the problem. Sure. Too. And, and, and that is fine for Obama because he can say it's all Bush's mm -hmm. fault. But McCain's got to do something else. Uh, let me just share with you what the uh, Weekly Standard had to say about the McCain campaign and their kind of gyrating positions. Such contradictions have become a defining characteristic of the McCain campaign over the last month as his strategists try to find something, anything, that will stop his slide in the polls. He suspended his campaign and threatened to skip the first presidential debate unless there was an agreement on a bailout plan. There was no agreement. He debated anyway. He said big government caused the current financial mess and then called for more of it. He called for a federal spending freeze and then proposed having the Treasury buy individual home mortgages at a potential cost of $300 billion. You were very critical of that plan on your editorial page. Well, it, it, uh, it, in particular because it gives the taxpayers the loss right up at the top. Uh, it doesn't even do what the, some other previous proposals had done, which is at least give them a haircut. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, it, that's a sense of the way the campaign has been lurching without a common theme. And I, and I agree with the weekly standard criticism. There's one thing that it does do, though, it, in your point, he is trying, because he's behind in the polls, to come up with something, anything. He tried a mortgage bailout plan, now he's trying this refinancing. But one thing it does go to the heart of that perhaps someone could stand up and talk about would be fundamentally housing prices need to stop dropping. And we need to look ahead and figure out what's going to happen with the job situation, which is rapidly deteriorating. And if someone has the courage to stand up and talk directly about that problem, that might be a smart thing to do right now. John Harwood, can you name one thing that Barack Obama has done in the last month that would contribute to the resolution of this financial crisis? One idea that he's put on the table. Well, he helped pass the bailout plan in Congress, which uh, uh, John McCain did in the end, too. That was, uh, when you got to the end stage of that process, both of those guys were acting like leaders in supporting this plan and trying to get it passed. Uh, Barack Obama lately has come out with some smaller bore ideas uh, last week. Uh, he had a small business uh, you know, tax incentive program. But uh, look, he's not president. John McCain's not president. One of the problems is that not only the candidates, but the president of the United States, the Treasury Secretary, and all the smart guys advising them are making up these plans, plays in the sand. The playbook's not there anymore. They're, they're drawing it up in the dirt. There is hardly a day, Tom, that goes by that we don't see a new iteration of how we're going to fix this. I want to add one comment to this before you move on to your next subject. The winners in this political campaign are going to end up envying the losers because they're going to be stuck with these problems. They're going to have to deal with them, and they haven't begun to address them with the necessary gravitas that they can only bring to bear after the election is over. One of the senior economic advisors for Barack Obama said to him, from a political point of view, the good news is that the economy will continue to be bad until the election. The bad news is when you take office, it'll be much worse. <laughs> but I think this would be an historic opportunity for anybody who wins. I mean, yes, you, we have a lot of difficulties, but if you're coming in, you have the opportunity to help turn it around. And if you do, and if it does, and housing prices are going to bottom out at some point. <laughs> yes. So then you're in a position to be able to take credit for that, even if your policies didn't do much to help it, and then you get the political benefit. So I, I, I think I'd take the victory as opposed um, to the on defeat. On the other hand, <laughs> yeah. 